Okay, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, a little bit in a little bit more detail how to use the events list feature of Xways Forensics, which was introduced, I think, in version 16.9. Um, so anyone using a version later than that um, or equal to that can benefit from this. Um, I have already done one fairly quick video uh, to demonstrate the events list, but this one's going to be uh, a little bit more specific in that it will uh, demonstrate how you can quickly get an indication of uh, user activity for a particular computer such as uh, start up shut down log on log off um, and there's loads of other things to choose from uh, but I'm just going to demonstrate um, a couple of those features uh, now you can use this effectively in like a triage mode if you um, if you need to try and determine this quickly um, I'm going to show how you can do that uh, you can apply it to a case in exactly the same way uh, obviously I'm going to omit some of those details for the purposes of the video so I'm just going to click create a new case. And I'm going to add my image, to it, which is a Windows uh, image of Windows 7, uh, provided courtesy, I might add, of uh, Jens Kirshner of XY Forensics, who's let me use the image. Uh, it's one of their training images, and they've let me use it for this. So. I appreciate that. So as normal when you add an image it will uh, recursively, uh, not recursively, it will traverse each partition. Um, you can see the information for each partition in the pane here. Um, now in order to benefit from the events list you have to refine your volume snapshot. Uh, so let's just pretend for a moment that we're um, in, a, in a quick time scenario where we've got to try and come up with this situation, this information fairly quick. Um, the kind of information that relates to start up and shut down and log on and log off, as you probably all know, is uh, largely embedded in event log files. So if we go to the, if we use the type filter and enable these three files here, which is part of the Windows internals category, that will list only those files for this particular computer, for which is quite a few. The reason I filtered that out is because we can ask the volume snapshot to only process files in the way that we need them to be processed and it will exclude all the ones that are filtered out. Now obviously the steps I'm about to take you can apply to every file in your case um, and for many other different file types it's also useful to do that but for this specific, specific uh, scenario um, I'm going to leave it the way, um, the, the way that will make the most sense for this particular case. So I've gone to a specialist refined volume snapshot or you can press F10. Uh, and when you click the extract internal metadata browser history and events uh, button or the little tick box rather, it comes up with this ellipsis and that's the important bit. You click that and it comes up with all of this, most of which you would probably have ticked uh, for a normal case, uh, but this is just a quick triage uh, situation. Um, by ticking this box here, provide internal timestamps in files as events, it will go through all the files looking for timestamp related information um, and list them in the events uh, aspect of x -Waste Forensics, which I'll show in a minute when it's finished. So we click OK to that, um, apply, it to, um, uh, apply it to all files unless they're classified as irrelevant, excluded or significantly in this case filtered out. So I put that the the, uh, the file type filter on so it will only conduct this action up here um, across the files that are filtered in which are the ones that you can see there which will make it a little bit faster so we click OK to that we can choose as as always either uh, which partition or which forensic image if I had 10 forensic images in here I could choose which ones I want to apply this to but uh, again if, if you're in a quick time scenario you've probably chosen so as you can see it goes for all these EBT files comes up with some some stuff for each partition finishes it fairly quick then when you click this button down here this is the uh, events functionality and it works in the same way as what the search uh, pane does it effectively uh, puts you in a slightly different mode so you when you click that again it can, it'll ask you which uh, well if you click on the case route when you click that it will ask you which images or partitions you want to list the information for if you was on a particular partition it would not come up with this box in fact I'll show you that just for the purposes of 
demonstration, if you just click on partition two and you click that, it will list all the stuff straight away. Whereas if you click on case root and do it, it asks you what you want to apply it to. And that's fairly standard for, for most things in Xbox Forensics. Okay, so fairly quickly, it's come up with this big list um, of which you've got the timestamp, uh, the event type, uh, its category, and where it's found this information. And then you've got the, the traditional X-Ways Forensics type column there as well, um, which is effectively file type uh, and normal file system information over there. Um, and in the description, it's got the user credentials that this particular event applies to. But the best bit and the bit that I think is particularly kind of magical is if you click the type funnel, uh, the type filter funnel, you can then choose which particular events you want to see listed. And there's loads that you can choose from. Um, as you can see, uh, you know, fetch requests, sign on stuff, so on and so forth. Um, but these ones are quite useful when you want to try and demonstrate any kind of usage patterns. So we're interactive log on, log off. And so I'm just going to choose those four for now. Uh, and obviously you can, you know, single click, double click, control, control and click to selectively choose things. So you click activate and then that filters it out a little bit more. And then when you sort by timestamp, you then got in date order what's gone on. Um, so you've got interactive log ons, log off, starts up, tells you which users were doing their thing. Uh, and then naturally you can highlight a selection of those, right click and export um, and choose a HTML file if you want, XML for more elaborate uh, functionality, I guess, and TSV for just direct input into a spreadsheet. Um, and if you've not got more than I'm not sure what the limit is, if it might be 10,000 entries or something, you can choose to dump it in the clipboard. And if you choose TSV, you also get the option to Unicode it. So if you're uh, using a, a non kind of English uh, character set or if your um, uh, target machine is, you might want to select Unicode. And then you can click OK to that and it will dump it out to a spreadsheet. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I've demoed it before. Um, so that's a, a really kind of quick overview of that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to demonstrate uh, was um, perhaps a more manual way of getting some information for specific users. So um, if we go out of the event for a moment, take our internals off but put our Windows registry on, I just want to see some files. So it finds me some uh, some files I can't actually see. I've not set my path up properly there. I'll move that up. So you've got a couple of SAM files here. Uh, if I just want to look at one of them properly, you can use the inbuilt registry viewer of Xbox Forensics by just simply double clicking it. So your registry viewer comes up and you can look at uh, account information here. So there's the names resolved, but you've also got the keys, which when you click on the F uh, key, will give you information like last password changed, last login failure, um, last login time if it can find it. Um, this one's got the last login time, last login count and so on so it gives you a, an indication and you can report that out really easily by just clicking that and create report uh, you choose the i uh, what it's asking you there is what kind of template you want to use for your report in this case with some files you choose identity as far as i'm aware i've just kind of worked that out for myself but uh, it might not be officially correct um, choose where you want to dump it and then it should load in your web browser of choice. He says optimistically. And there it is. So um, you've got Jens there, is the username, which resolves to that uh, SID, which is that in hex. Uh, and so you can then come down here and find user ID 1000, which is this one here. So you've got all of that in the table. 
but you've also got the stuff for the other users as well and then you can obviously use that as part of your report or email it off or what that's it